Hey YouTube, this is uh, Pedals and Six Strings. Uh, I said on the 5th Gen Rams forum that I'd make a video uh, kind of going through my Retrax uh, XR installation. It's a uh, retractable tonneau cover. And uh, I have, as you can see there, the multifunction tailgate, which uh, gives some problems uh, for your tonneau cover selection. So let me kind of show you why here. So the whole point of these braces, pop the truck open, you can see the braces there and there's the OE brace and mountain biking dirt. Um, so as you open this door, it's uh, putting some different kinds of load on a truck bed that you probably typically wouldn't see with a typical tailgate that just folds out. So uh, I think what happens is that this bed, as you open the tailgate, it's putting forces on it like that. And so by putting the brace down there, you can uh, add a little bit of extra strength and rigidity to the bed. Um, and you know, it's probably a, a long-term solution. I would think that if you ran without braces for a little bit, maybe you're okay. I, I don't know, I, I can't imagine there being that much uh, flex in the bed, but then I also don't imagine that they just put those up for good looks, right? Um, so, yeah, and I got the I installed a uh, bed mat in here too. So right here, that is the main uh, component of the tonneau cover. Haven't opened it up or anything yet, so hopefully it's all good. It looks reasonable. It's a fairly heavy box, which surprised me. And then right here is uh, the rails, I would assume. So we'll uh, we'll see how this goes. The these covers are kind of on the pricey side. Um, to to be honest, I went with it because I wanted a little bit of extra security. Um, you know, the factory tonneau cover works great, but it is a fabric uh, top that can be easily you know sliced and whatever valuables you have in there. Uh, right for the taking um, so I just felt you know it'd be good to have a little extra security plus this is a nice nice cover so I also went with the XR uh, if I remember that right <clears throat> with the rail system so the idea is that I'm going to get a uh, Yakima uh, roof rack I guess and install it on that track system and then have my mountain bikes back here on top and not eat up the cargo area. So say if I want to go to Colorado or Arkansas or whatever, mountain biking for the weekend, I still have room for gear, have the bikes up top. They're not taking up any extra room. Uh, and then obviously have space for four. So be a good, uh, good way to schlep some gear down to Arkansas. So. Good morning, friends. Obviously it's morning. I decided to wait. Hey, it was way too hot and uh, <clears throat> a couple of my hairs twitched, so that made me think it was a mosquito, so that's about the time to go in. Sometimes uh, irrational fears have are based in a little bit of reality, so. Anyways, uh, so I want to show you this, what it looks like in daylight, just in case. So again, this is what it looks like in daylight. So that's the OEM bracket, as you can see. Pretty, uh, pretty chunky. And then you have the new writing bracket right there. And right there, much slimmer profile. They have a newer, a new design out. I'm not sure which one I have. It's just a little uh, bit shorter. I think the original one was three inches tall and the new one's two and a half inches tall to try and accommodate some different uh, tonneau covers. It, it wasn't an option or it's not gonna be a problem for this retrack. So I didn't, I haven't even measured to see if I have the new option. So another thing I'm going to do uh, I bought some like $20, $25 lights on Amazon. They're just nice little LEDs, they stick on back. Um, and I'm gonna wire these into the uh, factory uh, bed lights. So that should be pretty nice. I was thinking about putting those in before I put the bed in, or the, the cover in rather, and uh, decided to opt against that because I'm probably gonna mount these lights on the bottom of the cartridge because uh, I have a feeling if I mount them up on the actual truck bed, so if I mount them up here, oops, here, uh, it might get kind of shadowed by the cartridge. I'm not quite sure how low that's going to sit. I think it's 
probably 10 or 11 inches. So I have a feeling a lot of that light would be blocked by the cartridge itself. So by putting it on the underside of the cartridge should be, should be okay. And one other, one other quick thing about these lights. I like the fact that they all have connectors uh, in between each segment. So if you bust a wire or, you know, your LED, something happens to it and, and it's not working anymore, then you can just replace that one section versus having to replace the whole strand. So it uh, should be good. I'll put a link to it where I got those on Amazon uh, on, the, on the bottom of the video. Okay, so we're just about ready to start. Well, obviously I started unpacking it, so I got the side rails out. Uh, ready to be installed. Here's the cover. Uh, it's actually face where that MX label is face up. So uh, I just cut the corners of the box there, folded this out and rolled it forward. So it's, it's up right now. So your cover is right here. So next step we gotta do, over here and there's stickers all over the place. So trying to protect insulations from people like me. Uh, the screw here, pull this out, that bracket pops up. This little tube, you just pull it all the way out. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so we're ready for step two. We got those out. See the tube sitting over there, the bracket, so the cover is free to roll out uh, if it was in the unlocked position. So now uh, what I need to do, take the cover, pull it out six or eight inches, and then install the rails to the canister, which is done with these four screws. Thankfully, this is one of those things that doesn't exactly have a lot of hardware. It's just these four screws, those two Allen bolts, and then these uh, clamps. That's, that's pretty much it. That's what I like. It's not like a, an Ikea thing. So, I got a little tip. While you're putting these screws in, see, there's a, sorry for the camera shake. There's this one, and then there's this one. And the, the, cab is going to be towards that direction so this one here i had a tough time lining up mainly because i'm stupid <clears throat> but again this is why i'm making the video so there's this little uh, this is tough to do in reverse angle Let me back up a bit okay so there's this little lip you want to make sure your rail is fitting on this lip otherwise your screw hole uh is never the threads of the screw hole aren't ever going to get close enough to that screw for it to catch and at first I was cussing those guys for not making the screw a little bit longer, but it kind of makes sense because they want to make sure everything's lined up before you start tightening it down and potentially bend something. Now I will say these pieces on the rail, I guess they're metal. Oh, some parts just kind of feel like it's plastic. So, I mean, maybe it is, I don't, I don't know, tough to tell. Maybe it has some plastic inserts there around the metal, so. Just be cognizant of that. You can't really manhandle it too much, but this old idiot got it in place, so I'm sure you can too. Okay, so I'm gonna sweat my ass off for a bit. Uh, so once I got those two screws in to hold the rail into the cartridge, then you need to put on this front flap. Again, the cab is this way. Put that in. That's just these, this bolt there, that little Allen and that little Allen. So make those hand tight. It did not feel like those uh, required the force of God to get them in there. A little tricky getting the hole lined up on the second one, but again, that's probably more my ineptitude than anything. So I'm gonna go get my lovely assistant and off camera, we're gonna lift this thing in the truck bed. Should be a good time. Uh, yeah, she likes this kind of stuff. All right, there it is, it's in. Uh, the only thing I would say is that when you lift this in, make sure you have your hands in a position where you're not smashing them. Because of course I came in underneath the cartridge, underneath the rail, and then had to partially smash my hand to get it around. But this thing is probably 70 pounds, so it's not like gonna crush your bones or anything. Okay, so I wanna take a close up shot so you guys can see what's up. So you see those three bolts? sticking out there uh, that piece they're holding on is the brace so there looks to be more than enough room uh, not a ton but you know enough right so I think that that right in brackets pretty good deal 
think they're like 90 bucks or something in that neck of the woods. So, uh, yeah, I'll put the link to them in the description. Okay, so the next step is we're going to take the whole cover, slide it back to where these rails, uh, I think right here, are an eighth of an inch away from the, uh, pretty much like that. Okay, so I don't need to do anything on this side. Nice. It's a nice feature of the multifunction tailgate. Very easy to do that shot. So let me do the other side. It should be fairly even. <laughs> Let me just slide that dude. There we go. Bada bing. The next step is there's this extra flap here for the weather. So I'm gonna try and get this flattened as much as I can. And then you wanna trim it uh, where it's flush with the bed cap there so this thing's not sticking up. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then uh, I think it's time to start installing the clamps. Okay, so what's different about the XR versus the uh, MX is because this thing has a track, it is subjected to, you know, potentially hundreds of pounds of force uh, downwards. So you need to make sure the rail is fully supported. So the clamps look a little bit different with this. So this uh, piece right here can be adjusted with these two screws and it has some teeth in here. So you can raise and lower this so it's fully supported. So it's not just, you know, normal clamping, but it's also providing support, uh, you know, like that. So uh, let's see how that looks on the truck. Okay, so here it is on the truck. The issue I'm seeing, I don't know if it's a big deal. If you look at the cab, you'll see, or the cab, uh, the top here, the bed, it has all these bump bump and of course one lines up perfectly uh, with the clamp so it seems that I'll be putting a little bit of pressure on that uh, I don't think it's a huge deal necessarily so I can get that in there you can kind of see it you can't really tell that the clamp is rubbing on it but you know we'll get it snugged up and and looking at the torque specifications of how you uh, tighten these bolts it's not a lot of torque so you know, it's not uh, not a huge seal. <clears throat> I'm thinking there's not that much force. You just want a little bit extra support there. So, uh, and most of the time, I'll just be hauling a couple 30-pound mountain bikes on it. So it's not a ton of weight, anyways. So, okay, we'll tighten these clamps up. I'll let you know how it goes. So one other thing I forgot to mention. And this is the kind of wonky thing. As you're tightening down this bolt. You need to be applying downward pressure to this and as well as tilting it up slightly. They said two degrees. I'm not sure how you're supposed to measure that, but this, I guess just put a little force on there. That will help this seal because it's gonna be down like this instead of being up like that. So it'll, it'll help keep water out of the bed. Okay, so I got all the clamps installed. I saw a couple installation issues. <clears throat> One, these look okay, pretty much. This one, oh yeah. You see how it's pointed down towards the outside of the truck? And this one is quite a bit. And so what happened is, a combination of things. One, I torqued it up to the appropriate value, which I think is okay if everything is square. But since this piece back here is resting on that little hump I showed you earlier, it already tilted the, the clamp down just a little bit. Not so much to where I'm worried about the clamping force. Uh, but it did put this at a bit of an angle. And then the second part is where this bolt goes, it doesn't go into a flat piece of the truck. It's on a downward piece. So as you tighten it, it's, it starts sliding down and then increasing the angle on this clamp. So I'm probably gonna loosen this up. I've already done it a little bit, but loosen it up just a bit more and try and get this uh, as straight as I can and while still having some amount of, of force going against the bed, so this thing is, is jammed and, and nice and secure. But I think the, uh, the old handy Craftsman was about, uh, well, it's tough to show you this without the light, that's inch pounds. I went just a little bit above uh, nine pounds. So that'd be about like eight or 9.2 Newton meters. So 
that was obviously too high. So like I said, I'm gonna just try and get this snugged up. Okay, so I knew that would happen. Only a complete idiot says I'm almost done. Uh, so I took the measurements from the track. You're supposed to take three different measurements to make sure your rails are square. And it was like 62 inches perfectly. And I get down here, 62 and a quarter, which surprises me that the uh, cover rolls still pretty well, but so I'm gonna need to probably loosen up these two brackets and then those plastic or nylon washers that you can see right there and there those are actually used to uh, adjust the the squareness of the rails so loosen up the clamps and then i should need to let's say i need to decrease the distance to so tighten them a little bit eighth of an inch each side uh, and then we should be golden so okay so i got all the clamps in uh retorqued it the rails are square to within maybe a 32nd of an inch so that's well within specifications we'll see it still is pretty firm okay so i think we're all pretty good i was just checking the fit of the cover out <clears throat> primarily this gasket back here. I'm assuming it's going to relax a little bit since it's been curled up most of its life. So uh, you can see where that should provide some level of waterproofing. Not a ton though because you shut that. There's a nice little gap in there. But that's not the cover's fault. Um, yeah. So I think it seems pretty good. Operation's pretty easy. You can tell once it gets to about here, the spring loaded, I don't know if it's spring loaded or just the weight of the cover takes it back. So it's still a little stiff going through here, but they said that's normal for 24, 48 hours. So, and it's not so stiff, it's horrible. So last two things I gotta do, take off all the protective plastic crap for killing the environment. And then uh, there's a couple drainage tubes in case water gets into the cartridge, it'll drain and then out the front of the bed. So get that done, and then I think I really will be done. I'm gonna make a quick follow-up on installing these lights. So I haven't got it done quite yet, uh, obviously since they're laying on the bed there, but uh, I wanted to, if you guys have these factory, oops, uh, if you guys have these factory cargo lights, they're uh, a little difficult to pull out. What you need to be careful of is that you have this bottom tab here that, that slides in and then it pushes back and then this little tab up here uh, snaps in there and holds it in place. You cannot, or uh, probably not very easily, get this pressed without pulling the tail light off. So to pull the tail light off, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, you need to raise up the bed, take a little screwdriver, pull this, and just remove this bed support. Do one side at a time, super important. Otherwise your whole, uh, not your bed, your tailgate will fall off. So just do one side at a time. There's a little Torx uh, in here, just like that, that one. And then this is one of those uh, clips that kind of has a inner plastic piece and you kind of go finagle it out. And then it has a outer plastic piece that is expanded when the inner piece is inside of it. So uh, wiggle both those out, just be careful uh, they're not super durable. I mean, they're okay. I wouldn't do it on a 20 degree winter day. Uh, same thing up here, same setup up there. Once that's done, you pull the whole taillight assembly out. So it just goes and it goes towards the back of the truck. This little rubber piece stays on the truck. So as you start backing it out, you can start getting a grip inside this lip right here to help pull it out. There are two tabs in here on the tail light assembly that go into the truck bed. Uh, they're just like little plastic knobs are about there and about there. And those just pull out. Once you get the tail light free, you don't need to undo the harness or anything. You can slide it around, set it in the truck bed, and you can go in inside the uh, truck 
bed uh, space in here and push down. Uh, I used a screwdriver and kind of levered it in there. Push down, get that tab down, and then push the uh, light assembly from inside out. And then you'll have these two sitting there like this. This one has a switch. Uh, I don't know anything about the wiring, so I got to research that. But the idea would be that when either the truck turns on the tail, the cargo lights, or I or I do it with that button, that those cargo lights, as well as all these accessory LEDs, they turn on as well. So we'll see how that goes. It, it's not rocket science, but I just don't know what the hell I'm doing. So uh, we'll get it figured out. All right. So I forgot to make a conclusion video, of course. Uh, so I got the LED lights installed they were pretty simple. Uh, if you look at the factory bed lights, there is a red wire and a black wire. Um, so you just splice into those with the uh, LED lights and there's no problem. You just snap everything back in uh, and, and they work great. I need to still go back in there and finish up my wiring just to kind of clean it up, make sure there aren't any wires uh, dangling around. But I also wanted to verify my placement of the LEDs, make sure that the lights uh, equally distributed and all that good stuff. So uh, hopefully this video is helpful for, for everybody. And uh, if you got any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll uh, answer them as quickly as I can.